bright duty every student matters hello learners welcome to your class math class today we are going to continue with the lesson of algebra i hope you remember in the last lesson we learned about the introduction to algebra where we learned also about the variables and patterns and we have learned that how we can write a particular pattern given a particular variable using a variable we learned how to write an expression for a given pattern the geometrical rules that you deal with and also with the arithmetic rules okay so by the end of this class when you learn about the variables and common rules you will learn about the rules from geometry that is perimeter of square perimeter of rectangle then in arithmetic you will see what is commutative rule of addition of two numbers commutative rule of multiplication of two numbers and distributive rule of numbers so let us begin our lesson where we are going to learn about the use of variables in common rules okay and we are going to start with the rule that we learn in geometry geometry is a branch of mathematics that deals with the shapes right so what is the basic shape that we know square is one of the very basic and common shape that we deal with so we are going to start with that so we are going to start with the perimeter of a square i hope you do remember what we mean by the word perimeter perimeter means that you just go round a particular structure and the length of its boundary that you have it is called the perimeter so starting from here let's say a and you go down to b then you go to point c then you go to point d and then finally you end up to land on point a so you have gone round the boundary of this particular square square which has got all the sides equal right so the perimeter is basically ab plus bc plus cd plus d i hope we do, do remember this now the perimeter of a square is basically the sum of all sides and here because it's a square all the sides are equal so instead of adding side plus side plus side plus side what we can do we can see that we can simply multiply it by 4 4 multiplied each side gives the formula 4s i hope you do remember in the chapter of mensuration we have already studied about the perimeter of a square and we have also used there this particular side this s so that is where we have already learned about the variable that we used and without even knowing it right so now what we have learned already in mensuration it was basically the use of these variables in your formula of perimeter of a square so thus we can write that perimeter p is equal to 4s here s is the variable so the perimeter or the perimeter changes as the value of side changes so whatever you keep the side say side is 5 for this particular square so what will be the perimeter then you simply do 4 times 5 and the answer is 20 say centimeter right now if suppose if this particular square has got all its side equal to 20 cm so what do you do you simply times 20 by 4 and the answer is 80 units right now moving to this next one here it is a perimeter of rectangle the next common shape that you see all around you so we know that in a particular rectangle the opposite sides they are equal right so this is equal to this one and the lengths are equal and breadths are equal right now so we write the perimeter of a rectangle as 2 times length plus breadth right so now instead of l and b as like instead of writing the whole word length and breadth we are using the alphabets l and b okay these are small alphabets so here this l and b are two variables that we are using so we write it as the perimeter can be written as 2l plus b or you can also write it as 2l plus 2b both ways it's correct okay thus perimeter this is equals to sign thus perimeter p is equal to 2 times l plus b or you can write it as 2l plus 2b where l and b are the variables and the value of perimeter changes as the length and breadth changes clear now we have given a note very important note to read here both l and b are variables they take the value independent of each other say so you have this particular rectangle where the width the breadth is 3 for each and the length is 4 say so you draw another rectangle and again i'm saying the breadth remains the same and the length this time is 5 and 5 so you see 
I am just changing the length. I am keeping the breadth fixed. And similarly, what I can do, I can keep the length same as four and four, and I can change the breadth as from three. I can change it to ten. That doesn't matter. However, so what we understand, the values here, these L and B, they can take the values independently. That is the value of one variable does not depend on the other one. Okay, this is very important to understand that variables they are not connected to each other. L and B are two different variables. They have got no connection with each other when it comes to or putting a particular value for them. Now let us see what do we mean by the use of variables and common rules coming to the arithmetic. Okay, so first of all, arithmetic is where we deal with all the numbers and numbers and numbers, right? So starting with the addition. Okay, a very common method that you see in your arithmetic mathematics. So arithmetic deals with the numbers and addition is the simplest operation that you do with the numbers so starting with the commutativity rule of addition what do you mean by commutative rule is that see here the example it says 5 plus 4 is 9 or if i do 4 plus 9 it is still a uh, 4 plus 5 it is still 9 okay so just imagine here i've got five fingers i have opened four fingers here right so 5 plus 4 the answer is 9 if i'm changing this to 5 and this to 4 is this going to change my answer here it is 5 and this is 4. The answer is 9. Now if this is 4 and this is 5, the answer is still 9. So what do we notice? We notice that the commutative property, this is the commutative property, that if you are changing the order of the numbers, the result will still be same. Okay. So thus we can say that 5 plus 4 or 4 plus 5 is basically the same thing. This is the commutative property of addition of numbers. Please make sure that you do remember this particular spelling of commutativity or commutative property of addition. Okay, In which it results that the same result we get even if we are interchanging the numbers. Okay, So how do we write this in the common rule? We say a plus b is equal to b plus a. Here a and b are the variables that we have. And these are two different variables, so they are not dependent upon each other that if A is increasing, B should also increase. No, A can be fixed, B can change, B can be fixed, A can change. So, or both of them can change or both of them can be fixed. Okay, they are just totally independent, you have to understand this. So, here we have kept two different variables to represent this particular commutativity of addition. Now comes the commutativity of multiplication. Very simple and very similar to commutativity of addition. If you do 8 times 2, what is the answer? 16. If you do 2 times 8, what is the answer? Still 16. So what we see? We see if you do A times B or you do B times A, you will still get the same answer. Okay. Again, A and B are the two variables which are independent to each other. So this is the commutative property of multiplication in which the results remain same even if we interchange the numbers. Clear? Simple? But make sure that you do remember that what name, what property it is related to. Okay? Now coming to the next property that is distributive property of numbers. Okay? Distributive property of numbers, this is something little tricky but make sure that you do understand this very clearly because it's very important for you to solve many questions in your future. Starting with the example which is given 6 times 32. Well, this particular question is a little complex to solve, right? But we can change this complex number into a simple number by using the method of distributivity. And as the name itself says distributivity, that means you are going to distribute something. Let's see what we are going to distribute. We are learning the distributivity of multiplication over addition of numbers. This is very important to remember. We are learning distributivity of multiplication because we are going to distribute the number. We are dealing with the multiplication sign and when we are converting it, we will end up with the addition sign. Okay, not the, We are not dealing with any division. We are not dealing with any subtraction here. So what do we say? We call it that we are learning the distributivity, I am marking this, make sure that you do remember this clearly. It is distributivity of multiplication. What are we dealing with? Of multiplication and it is going to be over the addition of numbers. Okay. Now, 
What do you mean by this is that if we are dealing with 6 times 32, I am not good with my 32 times table. What will I do? I can break the number. I can write 32 as 30 plus 2. Is this clear? We can write 32 as 30 plus 2. Now I am confident with my 30 times table. It's 3 times whatever the number is and I will just put a 0. I am confident with my 2 times table. So if instead of dealing with 32, I am dealing with 30 and 2. It's very simple, isn't it? Now let us do 6 times 30 plus 2. What will we do? We will multiply 6 by 30 and then we will multiply 6 by 2. Okay, so what is 6 times 30? 6 times 30 is 180. What is 6 times 2? It is 12. And if we add them together, we get 192. So we get the answer of 6 times 32 as 192. And how do we write this particular um, distributivity of numbers in terms of variables is A, because it's distributivity, over multiplication, right, of multiplication over the addition of numbers. So, A times B plus C, it is A times by B plus C. A times by, A times by B plus C is A times B plus A times C. Is this clear? If we multiply A with two variables B plus C, what do we do? We first do A times B, then we do A times C, and then we add the two answers. Clear? Now comes the last property. It is called the associativity of addition. Okay, this is a very simple property, very much similar to the commutative property that you have learned. Okay, so this property states that the result of the numbers added when remains same regardless of their grouping. So, if you are doing A plus B plus C, okay, so if suppose you are adding A and B first, or you do A plus B plus C and you add these two numbers first, the answer will still be the same. Let us look at the example. It is, we need to do 4 plus 2 plus 7, okay. Let's try what is the answer of 4 plus 2 at once and then we will add the answer to 7. So, we know that 4 plus 2 is 6. And 6 plus, now we add the 7 to this, this is 13, right? Now, let's say if instead of this, we are doing 4 plus 2 plus 7, and now we are adding 2 and 7 at first. So, the answer is 9, and we are left to add this with 4. So, 4 plus 9 is again 13. So, do you see that no matter which numbers we are choosing at first, the answer is getting still the same. This is called the associativity of addition. Okay, this is not true for subtraction, so we are not learning that. 